I give thanks to the Lord for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, his steadfast love endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, his steadfast love endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, his steadfast love endures forever. Out of my distress, I called on the Lord. And the Lord answered me and set me free. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do to me? The Lord is on my side as my helper. I shall look in triumph on those who hate me. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in man. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princes. All nations surrounded me. In the name of the Lord, I cut them off. They surrounded me, surrounded me on every side. In the name of the Lord, I cut them off. They surrounded me like bees. They went out like a fire among thorns. In the name of the Lord, I cut them off. I was pushed hard so that I was falling, but the Lord helped me. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. Glad songs of salvation are in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The right hand of the Lord exalts. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. I shall not die, but I shall live, and recount the deeds of the Lord. The Lord has disciplined me severely, but he has not given me over to death. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them, and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvellous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we pray, O Lord. O Lord, we pray, give us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has made his light to shine upon us. Bind the festal sacrifice with cords up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, I will extol you. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Hello and welcome again to our daily Bible reading. We're going to finish off 2 Timothy having a look at Paul's final chapters that we have record of at least. And so let's pray. Father, I, I ask that you would help our hearts to be soft and open before you. May I hide behind your word and may your Holy Spirit speak through me to those who are joining with us now in this daily Bible reading. In Jesus' name, amen. 2 Timothy chapter 3 But understand this, that in the last days there will come times of difficulty, for people will be lovers of self, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, unappeasable, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving good, treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having the appearance of godliness but denying its power. Avoid such people, for among them are those who creep into households and capture weak women, burdened with sins and led astray by various passions, always learning and never able to arrive at a knowledge of the truth. Just as Yarnus and Yambras opposed Moses, so these men also opposed the truth, men corrupted in mind and disqualified regarding the faith. But they will not get very far, for their folly will be plain to all, as that of those two men. You, however, have followed my teaching, my conduct, my aim in life, my faith, my patience, my love, my steadfastness, my persecutions and sufferings that happened to me at Antioch, Iconium and Lystra, which persecutions I endured, yet from them all the Lord rescued me. 
Indeed, all who desire to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted, while evil people and impostors will go on from bad to worse and being deceived. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have firmly believed, knowing from whom you learned it and how from childhood you have been acquainted with the sacred writings which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. So just to, I guess, to point out something that may not be immediately obvious, but when Paul says all scripture is breathed out by God, he's speaking to Timothy largely about the Old Testament. And I hope that corrects maybe some people's thinking. As Christians, the Old Testament's now not for us. The Old Testament is back in the past. We don't need to know about it because we're new covenant Christians. And here Paul says, no, it's all profitable. It's all profitable. And I've made this point over and over and over that, the, that this, the books of the Bible are not written to us, but they're written for us. And this is what the New Testament itself says. And Paul's now reminding Timothy of this fact also. Paul is also making the, the point that, Timothy, I'm asking you to do this because I've done it. I'm, I'm walking the talk. And that's a great leadership principle. This is now 2 Timothy chapter 4. I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing and by his kingdom, preach the word, be ready in season and out of season, reprove, rebuke, and exhort with complete patience and teaching. For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. As for you, always be sober-minded, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. So again, Paul is alluding to this time period, the, the last time, in, the, in the, the last days, the end time, it says, uh, but in the last days, in, in chapter 3, verse 1. And the last days, I would argue, are the last days of the old covenant, which would be brought to an end with the destruction of the temple. And you might think, but I thought the old covenant ended at the cross. And it did. It was made obsolete, it says, in Hebrews chapter 8, verse 13. And Hebrews 8, 13 says, and it is about to be done away with. And so these last days, the days leading up to the close of the old covenant, this is what it means here. And I know we read it as if this is written to us and we read it as if it's talking about days ahead for us or the days we're in. And I think there's an application here that no matter what day you're in, there's going to be scoffers. But Paul was particularly pointing out to Timothy, it's going to get tougher. It's going to get tougher because this is how it's, it's, it's playing out now. As the old covenant is brought to an end, a covenant of condemnation, a covenant where the where the enemy of our souls had access to accuse the, 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 the faithful before God and with the old covenant br being brought to an end, the enemy of our soul, the accuser of the brethren, the, the, the adversary, Satan, would be cast out from the presence of God. We go on, verse 6. For I am already being poured out as a drink offering and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. Do your best to come to me soon, for Demas, in love with this present world, has deserted me and gone to Thessalonica. Christians has gone to Galatia, Titus to Dalmatia, Luke alone is with me. Get Mark and bring him with you, for he is very useful to me for ministry. Tychicus I have sent to Ephesus. When you come, bring the cloak that I left with Carpus at Troas, also the books, and above all the parchments. Alexander the coppersmith did me great harm. The Lord will repay him according to his deeds. Beware of him yourself, for he strongly opposed our message. At my first defence, no one came to stand by me, but all deserted me. 
may it not be charged against them. But the Lord stood by me and strengthened me, so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed and all the Gentiles might hear it. So I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil deed and bring me safely into his heavenly kingdom. To him be the glory for ever and ever. Greet Prisca and Aquila and the household of Onesiphorus. Erastus remained at Corinth and I left Trophimus, who was ill, at Miletus. Do your best to come before winter. Eubulus sends greetings to you, as do Pudens and Linus and Claudia and all the brothers. The Lord be with your spirit. Grace be with you. And I find it intriguing that uh, we, we see here that Trophimus, who was ill, I left at Miletus. Um, if Paul had the gift of healing, why didn't he just heal him? And it, for me, what this does, is it highlights that such gifts like the gift of healing actually belongs to the one who is healed. If you're healed by God, you receive the gift of healing. And if you received the gift of healing, you received it because of God's grace, not because you have earned it or because you're entitled to it, because I don't think we are. And this is an example of it with uh, Trophimus. Uh, Trophimus. And so we, we also have uh, Paul uh, knowing, stating straight up, I, I'm about to die. I know I'm going to be martyred. I know I'm going to die. And he was. He was taken down to the port in Italy because he wasn't crucified as Peter was because Paul was a Roman citizen. So he was beheaded instead. And that was the last thing that Paul wrote that we have record of. And what a way to go. Faithful to God to the end. And I pray that that will be our story as well. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for those who've joined with me today in this daily Bible reading. May our hearts be stirred to be faithful to you to the end. I pray, Lord, that we would keep up the fight right to the end, the, the good fight of faith, that we would hold fast to Christ and that we would bear witness to Christ no matter what difficulties, trials or persecution we might endure, just as the Apostle Paul did. So bless those who've joined with me today in this daily Bible reading. Help them to endure through difficulty. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks so much for coming on this journey and thank you for joining us in this Bible reading today. Please give it a thumbs up. And if you're not yet a subscriber, please subscribe. And you'll see me tomorrow for our next daily Bible reading.